October 20th, 2018. Well, I went over to West Hurley last night and picked up the new tote. And, uh, and the listing, I think they said they were clean, um, which they basically are. But uh, this one had some oil residue in it, either olive or canola. I'm not sure which. Um, anyway, so I had to uh, flush it out. So uh, I did a quick rinse with some water. I filled it up about... Uh, an eighth of the way last night to get the, the majority of the oil sludge out, flush that out, and then uh, close the valve, and I put some detergent in, and put the ram pump on it, and let it just flush overnight. So we got most of the oil out of here now. There's a little bit of residue still escaping on top. Um, could get more out if this water temperature was higher, but, uh, you know, it's October. What do you want? So uh, anyway, these tanks are really nice. They only weigh about 90 pounds empty, uh, so I can manage it by myself pretty easily. Um, and uh, 275 gallons. I looked up, uh, well, you can look on pretty much any plastic. You can look up the symbol on it. Where did I find that here last night? Uh, it's H2PE, so it's uh, uh, high density polyethylene and I looked up the temperature numbers on it and all and it looks like uh, I think 248 Fahrenheit is the uh, is where it starts to melt um, so I should have no trouble getting to 160 in this tank 160 Fahrenheit as thermal mass storage and I probably could even go into 200 or almost boiling without any trouble um, I probably will have a hard time getting almost 300 gallons of water uh, anywhere near boiling but anyway um, so I just thought I would uh, share the new tank with you uh, I'm gonna start figuring and insertion and uh, figuring out how to get it into the greenhouse uh, this afternoon evening and try and get it set up and uh, brace for winter uh, hopefully this will make it so I don't have to stoke as late at night and we'll have a little bit more smooth temperature in the greenhouse on the overnights and on the really cold days I'm going to go ahead and dump this uh, valve open and we'll uh, flush out as much of the oil as we can <clears throat> and uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, uh, just part one of the video, I thought I would share the tank with you and then uh, later on I'll show it in the greenhouse and that sort of thing. Alright, thanks for watching. Okay, so after a little finagling and shemangling, trying to get the tank in, I was going to lift up uh, the plastic on this side of the greenhouse and just slide under. But then I realized that when I built the greenhouse, I outsmarted myself on that. Because I set the inner layer of plastic under soil on all the edges to get a nice tight seal. And rather than disrupt that seal, I decided it would be easier to pop the door off the greenhouse off the end, pull the plants out, and go in that way. So we'll go around and have a look at that. So here we are on the other end of the greenhouse. And the uh, greenhouse looks a little naked without its nice glass door on it. I popped it off. Just took some screws out. Stuck the frame off. I really have to rebuild the catch side of this frame anyway. So uh, I'm not too concerned about it. Anyway, the tank just, just barely squeezed through the door here. This is 40 inches inside edge to inside edge. And the tank is 40 inches outside edge to outside edge. But it's in. Um, and I'm still playing with orientation. I'm not sure if I'm going to flip it 90 degrees around this way. Or if I'm going to keep it in this orientation. My original plan was this orientation. And I kind of like how that sits. Uh, there's certainly lots of shelf room on top for plants. Once we get it filled and rigged. Um, so I don't know. But uh, I'm really excited to have it in. That's a, a big step. That was kind of the big hurdle that was uh, kind of hanging me up here. And uh, now that it's in, I feel a little better about it. So we'll just have to go ahead and uh, rig up our uh, coil and heat pump system to it. Um, originally, I was going to pump to the tank and let it gravity feed back to the pot so we wouldn't have the coil uh, to cross another thermal mass delta. Uh, so it'd be more efficient. Um, but given that there's oil sludge in here and stuff, I think rather than be boiling, I don't know what kind of oil, probably canola oil, 
possibly GMO. I don't really want to be boiling that in here or cooking that in here and having that vapors and fumes all through here. So I, I think instead of doing that, I'm just going to uh, use the coil like I did last time and isolate the pot from the remote tank. Uh, but this tank is 275 gallons, and according to my calculations, it should give me around 300,000 BTUs uh, in storage. So that's a tremendous amount of heat. So, uh, all right, I guess uh, we'll see how much progress I make today on rigging the rest of this up. There's other chores around the farm to do. Okay, so I just finished rigging it up, uh, sort of in test mode till I can really get it straightened out. That circulator's running, and we're transferring heat from the tank on the stove to the big thermal mass tank. <coughs> you can see the flow that the circulator pump is putting through, and you can see that that's pretty warm water coming back in. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, I probably will change this out to better plumbing. Uh, even though this thermal mass tank water is not going to be in contact with plants or growing plants or anything, I think I would rather not have phthalates at high temperatures uh, for any extended period of time. But for now, uh, these are the parts that I had in stock and on hand, and sometimes you got to work with what you got to uh, get things up and functional. Um, Anyway, uh, the tank is at, uh, well, 100 liters, I'm sorry, 1,000 liters, um, and, or just about 260 gallons, I would say, looking at that gauge. So we're just about full, and I've finally gotten the pump up and running, as I was with this uh, circulator pump. So I was getting and finding the right fittings and making sure nothing leaks and all those little fine plumbing details. Anyway, uh, it is running. Um, I did opt to go with the uh, coil in the pot just to keep uh, oils from the tank uh, out of the stock pot and so that we're not um, boiling off the vapors from that and making a mess of that stock pot because oils, as they break down, tend to be really tough to scrub off. So, um, overall, uh, I would say this worked out perfectly exactly how I planned. Uh, I couldn't have hoped for a better fit. I measured and measured and checked and checked and thought and finagled in my head, but until you actually get the tank here, you really never know if it's actually going to fit how you think it is. But this actually worked out perfectly. Uh, so a 275-gallon tank of water. Of course, the ram pump supplied all the water for that. Uh, Basically from, uh, I don't know, uh, mid to late afternoon till now. I think it's around 11 o'clock at night at the moment. And uh, it's just about full. Uh, and I've done some other fiddling with the RAM as well. Um, I did give this a full flush through last night with the RAM. About a thousand gallons or so. Uh, just to get most of the oil out of it. And uh, so now uh, if I have to drain the tank I can. This is a 2 inch standard 2 inch fitting on here. Um, so I could come in here, I have uh, two inch lines from uh, my irrigation stuff, I could plug in here and drain if I need to drain. So uh, overall, I'm pretty happy so far. Okay, well uh, I've gotten pretty much everything I wanted to get done tonight done, uh, with the exception of running a new DC power lead, uh, which I will probably do tomorrow evening. Um, but uh, the circulator is running. I've added uh, two new thermometer sensors here, uh, high and low in the tank, as they always do. And then we calculate the average temperature from that. And then from that, we can derive the number of BTUs uh, based on how many gallons there is and how many pounds of water to the gallon. Uh, and uh, it's running. New sensors are coated in.
and it's working well. So that's it for the update for now on the new thermal mass hydronic system for the new reservoir. Pretty excited. One last thing real quick. I didn't show you that uh, I just used a, a garden stake and zip ties to set the depth and the suction line to go straight to the bottom. So we're pulling the coldest water from the bottom to run through the coil to get the highest thermal temperature difference between the two to grab as much heat. All right, that's it. Thanks to my viewers and subscribers. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network.